Anonymous again. Can you talk about the preferred body weight height ratio for strength training? How do you decide if you need to gain more weight, maintain, and just keep training or cut because you're a fat slob? Well, that doesn't really have anything to do with your height, though, does it? Now, if you are a competitive lifter, then I think it's important to to be aware of a couple of things. Uh, for example, in the 181-pound weight class, and, you know, and you just translate that into whatever the modern weight classes are at IPF because I don't have any idea. They keep changing them because they think they're going to be in the Olympics and they keep trying to stay in line with the Olympic lifters and they keep changing because metal count considerations, all this other shit. So let's just look at the traditional weight classes. The 181-pound uh, weight class, how tall are the guys in a 181-pound weight class at the world's? Well, they're about 5'4", all right? Uh, there have been several attempts to make an analysis of this, of this, and then I think I've seen recommendations of anywhere from 4 to 5 pounds of body weight per inch of height, and that's assuming a normal body composition of 15 to 18% body fat, and... Uh, this indicates that if you're six foot tall, you need to weigh probably 275 uh, if you're going to lift the heaviest weights. But that was not your question, was it? Your question was about strength training. And for strength training, you need to be as strong as you find the time to get, as much time as you can devote to this. If you're not a competitive lifter and you're not trying to get huge and powerful. You just want to be a little stronger. Be aware of the fact you're going to gain some weight. You need to gain some weight, probably, that an increase in strength also represents an increase in muscle mass. And you already know if you're a fat slob, okay? I don't need to tell you whether you're a fat slob. I will say that if you're at 20% body fat, nobody can honestly consider you a fat slob. You're not a fat slob at 20% body fat. You're not a fat slob at 22% body fat. All right? You're probably a fat slob at 30% body fat. All right? But does a reduction in body fat percentage from 30 to 20% represent the kind of investment of time and heartache and uh, missed opportunities that that equate to a good life. I don't know. That's just going to be your call, right? That's your decision. If you hate your belly bad enough to go on a cut to do it, then go on a cut. Fine with me. I don't care. I don't care that I'm 24% body fat or whatever the hell I am right now. I just don't care. I don't count macros. I don't count... Uh, uh, you know, I eat a lot of protein, but I don't really have a good handle on my body weight. It stayed fairly stable. It edges up a little bit. But, uh, I, you know, at 5'8", I'm probably weighing 230, 235. And I'm comfortable. I'm not interested in doing the things I would need to do to get down to 200 pounds. I don't want to be 200 pounds. I don't mind weighing 230 Uh because I'm just strength training right now. I'm not a competitor. I will tell you that the biggest mistake I made when I was a competitor was not going up to 242. I got some very bad advice from my coach, and uh, who was half bodybuilder at the time. And uh, I should have been 242 at 5'8", to even start to lift the most weights that I could lift. Uh, Ed Cohen lifted at 242, and he's 5'5", because he was not burdened with this bad advice that I got on this. So uh, I think that uh, for uh, strength and conditioning pur purposes, I think you would probably, uh, if you know if you're a fat slob and you need to, to lift weights I, and lose weight. Uh, the article a clarification on my website deals with exactly this topic. I'd advise you to look that up. 